Hello everybody, Adam here, and before we get into today's episode, just a quick announcement. We are coming up to a pretty significant milestone for the show, our first anniversary. I know, it's crazy. It doesn't seem like it's been that long. But we have been going for a whole year, and we want to have ourselves a little bit of a giveaway to thank you all for sticking with us and supporting the show. So, we've got a prize, and have we got a prize for you? Not only is there a dice bag of your choice from our friends at Board Game Solutions, we have also commissioned Silverwing Armouries for a force majeure, specific, unique, custom adventure journal. It is a thing of absolute beauty and it will be a grace to anybody's table. Do you want to win this fabulous prize? Of course you do. Who wouldn't want to win a fabulous prize? And how you do it is very, very simple. Either tweet us or post on our Facebook page with your favourite moment from the show so far. Either season, it doesn't matter, your favourite moment. And use the hashtag FMPodMemories so that we can find them all and get them together. The winner will be announced at the start of Season 3. Thank you very much, and uh, there we go. You know how it goes. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. You're listening to Force Majeure, an actual play Star Wars podcast. My name is Adam, and I'm your host, and today's episode will be brought to you after these words from our sponsors. A long, long, long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Flight Risk Podcast is a Star Wars actual play crime drama. Set during the Old Republic era, an eccentric group of mercenaries are thrust into the dark and violent world of organized crime. As agents of an enigmatic count, they traverse the outer rim in an attempt to not only survive, but to find their destinies without losing what's left of their souls. Subscribe at flightrisk.simplecast.fm. Hi, my name is Ed Fortune, and you're listening to Force Majeure. The campaign is Shadows of the Jedi. You can't have a role-playing game without people to role-play with, so I will ask my players to introduce their characters whilst asking them a question. What would you surrender at the point of a blaster? Hi, my name's Kay. I'm a human warrior starfighteress. My emotional strength is my compassion, but my emotional weakness is hatred. K wouldn't surrender anything at the point of a blaster, because if you start pointing guns at him, that means whatever he's got is important. So, you know, if you ask him, maybe he'll surrender whatever, but start bringing guns into the equation, then we don't negotiate. Hi, I'm Ross. I'm playing Dr. Smex Karam Danalawa. I'm a Serene Consul Healer, whose emotional strength is his compassion, and weakness is his obstinacy. As we've just demonstrated at the end of the last episode, yep, we're not surrendering at the point of a blaster. Um... Smex is a battlefield healer in some respects, so he's pretty trained to see guns and go, you know what? Fairly obstinate. Yeah, I'm going I'm to go with, you know, if you're going to fire it, fire it, I'm going to shoot you first. Or I'm going to heal you first. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> I can yeah, viciously teach you. you. Yeah. My name is Adam. I'm playing Tychus Barr, a basilisk sentinel artisan. My emotional strength is my bravery, and my emotional weakness is my recklessness. For Barr, it depends exactly on who's pointing the blaster. If it's the Empire, I'm not surrendering anything. Now that I know what they're capable of, they will kill me and they will prize it out of my cold dead hands. If it's one of my mates at a, a larksy hijink, well, they can have the pint. They, they can just have it. They want it more. In between, well, he'll take each uh, scenario as it comes. There's not a many things that he will be prepared to die for, but what we found in this ship is one of them. Hi, I'm Mim, and I play the B1 battle droid, Roy, whose specialisation is as a bodyguard with a career as a hired gun and I have an obligation of 40 to the Barr family. Roy is pretty ambivalent about things, you know, if if they want it, then they can take it, and then we'll we'll go get it back if we want it. You know, that that just makes life life, life more fun. 
Like, if you want the cookie, and your parents say, you can't have the cookie, so they take the cookie away, and you're like, I'm gonna get that cookie, and they put it up somewhere really, really high, and then bar extends my legs so I can reach the cookie. You know, there's a problem for every solution, and a solution to every problem. Did Tychus's parents take cookies off him at gunpoint? Because that's what the question was. This might explain a lot of those protocols. Well, they just... You know how if you're walking to a kitchen, you kind of expect a, ki- a cook might gesture at you with a knife in their hand? When you're dealing with people who work with guns for a living, you are surprisingly often at gunpoint just because they're pointing in that direction. Okay. Retracted question. And I really like cookies. He really does. Jedi Master Yoda is famous for saying the line, size matters not. Former Jedi Master Akit pointed out that this didn't apply to sandwiches and I was almost kicked out of the Jedi Academy for stealing Yoda's lunch. Party, when we left you last session, you have just about to escape a room, having looted it for its, I believe the term the young people use is, fat loot. What are you doing? This The spaceship is literally exploding behind you. Well, spaceships are supposed to do that, but this one's land-based, so maybe not. Well, it's exploding in front of us, isn't it? It's exploding all around us, yeah, we're inside it's not it. not going very well. Depends which way we're facing, it's the reactor that's going. Right, Tychus is still in the corridor, currently disarming mines that have been left. Look, they've, they've littered the land. He's, he's limping a little. They've littered these corridors with these nasty traps. Now, they're not fatal, but they're going to slow us down, which might prove fatal. I reckon I can disarm them, but I'm going to have to go ahead and take them in it. Doc, you might need to push the hover sled or, or, or something. 455, get over here, lad. The, the little droid scrambles over. The Lagomorphs, by the way, departed you all during the combat and have now reattached themselves to you. So you're now you're, you're now having fuzzy nuzzling again. I uh, put little Harvey in an outside pocket on my coat so he's not in the smuggler's compartment anymore. Yeah, Tychus, kind of without even really paying attention, just one of his hands, reaches down, picks up the bunny, puts it in a pouch that doesn't have the lightsaber in because that way it leads to sadness. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to paint you a very quick picture of you. As you're disarming uh, the, the little traps, you actually do pick up one of the other rabbits. Uh, just as it's sniffing one of the things, you're like, no, not for you. Well, he's going to wander over to the doctor and just duck, duck. The, the, the thing in his neck is, is he going to be okay? Is he going to be okay? Uh, I mean, I, I mean I'd, there's I'd, no long lasting effects. I, I don't have to tell you. It's M U M. Side effects of neurotoxins can include long term damage and possibly infertility. But luckily, you think you've caught it in time. As far as I know, I got it in time. But let's get out of the present situation, like the exploding ship, and then I'll, you know, have a much more detailed examination of him. Confirmed. Roy does some sort of gun fingers at him. You can tell he's... he's I don't, because I don't like gun things pointing at me. (laughs) Gun fingers. Yeah. (laughs) He's he's very happy with with how things are going with you. Given that one of Roy's arms is literally a gun. (laughs) Fair. (laughs) (laughs) There is another shove. The ship is definitely moving slowly. There is the alarm is being drowned out by a creaking, screeching sound. And you can definitely hear the secondary thrusters go off Take us in this, the background. This ship is going to explode. We do not need to blow up those crystals. I think they will go. Let's just get us out of here as quick as we can. Aye. And as you look to your side, there is a crash and a bang. And like the further down the corridor, not the way you hear further down the corridor, there is now a chasm which leads to lower floors. Right, the other way. Down there. Let's get out. Assuming I've now picked up all of the, the mines and kind of or disarmed or whatever. You, you have three. Yeah, and the rest are just disarmed and pushed out of the way. Yeah, it, you don't know how many they've left, but you've the corridor is, The corridor is clear, is the, is yeah. the main point. So were these mines that were simply waiting for us to step over, or were these mines which had trapped other people? Because there was a guy running around after one of the critters a little while ago. So as they left, mm. as the bad guys left, they dropped little devices to slow you down. Yeah. In the path that they went. Mm-hmm. So you've got a rough idea which direction they went, and you're going the other way. Okay. How at an angle is this now? It's getting steeper. You can right. still stand, Yeah. but there's a lean to it okay. as, it, as it starts to bury itself. All right. Well, grabbing onto the side of the statue hover sled that is towards the where the chasm is, I'm going to lean backwards and pull it with me and basically slide down towards the other end Um, using the hover sled as essentially a handrail to pull it closer. Yeah, no, you can do that. I want you all to make an athletics check to get down to the next level. Difficulty two. 
if you are using uh, a device or a repulsor or something like that as a handrail, you can have a blue die. I will be using my extra hands. Yes. I'm kind of think holding the anti your thing as an assist. You can't, you can't use that as an assist. Roy had the jumpy pack strapped to him, but I'm happy to pass this on to the Doctor or Kai if it's going to make their lives a bit easier. I probably can't get to Kai now. Well, there's this too. You had one, the Doc had one. Ah. And you've also got magnetic feet. I've got magnetic feet. Yeah, um, Kay doesn't need help. It looks like you all have a blue die. Kay got one advantage and one success. I also rolled a force die because that's the sort of person I am. And I got two black, which I am not going to use because okay. I don't need them. I imagine the uh, tapping into the force, the excitement, the violence that's gone on there. There's a lot of negative feelings around there. I'm not using You're, you're pretty angry at the moment anyway yeah. because you've just been reminded of who you want to work. I'm going to try and blank that out and focus on what I'm doing rather than what I was. I have two success and one threat. Okay. One success, one advantage. And I have two success, one threat, and one additional triumph. As you start getting down, the Doctor's the first to note that the gantry plank that you're using now is starting to come away. I think it always last. Is the, uh, could the threat be used yeah. a strain, maybe, uh, of catching yourself as you go down? I'm happy to use my advantage that the gantry doesn't topple until we're all well off it. How would you like to use the triumph? That when it does finally go, it brings a bit of the wall with it, revealing an exit. Excellant choice. So, so yeah, that's reasonable. I, you're all able to scrabble down. You cannot get back up. However, there's no there's no way you can return to where you were. So if you've missed anything, tough. And you, you actually see part of the gantry raid just slide away from you. Again, the emergency uh, emergency lights go on, and there is a hissing sound as all the doors on the new level that you're on open. Which is how I'm going to take your triumph. So you're on a new level. You hear a mild explosion in the background. How are you getting out? How thick are the walls here? It's a spaceship. I'm looking for an escape pod. Okay, do you still have a map? Yes, we do. Quickly glancing at the map, there is a escape pod next to the vehicle bay. Which is where from us? Which is two corridors down. We need to go to an escape pod. Aye. In fact, we could probably even fly that back to at least where the ugly is, or Red Yes, it's or wherever. It's not good enough for piloting outside space, but it'll, it'll get be a hole away. out of the... Right, let's, lay, aye, let, let's, let's roll. So two questions. One, we can't see daylight at this point, we're still too far away from stuff like that. Two, based on the fact we had to climb up to get into the thing in the first place and we've gone down since we entered the ship, do we reckon we're still above ground? At this point, you're probably at ground level. Right. Or possibly below. As you're contemplating that, you all feel another shove as the engines continue to grind you into the revealed city that's beneath you. Okay. All I'm thinking is, it's a nice idea to go to an escape pod, but if it hits, hits solid rock, we ain't going to get out very far. Well, let's find out, shall we? Yeah. Uh, so you all literally run up the corridor. Uh, it's now a little bit steeper. It's a little bit of a level. I think I said a couple of sessions ago that this adventure was not quite the Poseidon adventure. That was not that adventure. It's getting there. <laughs> you're, 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 yeah. you, the, the whole thing's a bit beginning to tip down. Are you doing anything special? I'd like to stay at the rear because I've got magnetic boots and I've got the jetpack. I can give extra upward thrust for either the the mag lift and keeping everything stable, or I can be there to help boost other people if they're falling behind or, or leaving Hugh's themselves. hanging on to the crystalline hut. Well, at the moment it's Ross and Mikey. I think. Yeah, we're all we're pulling it along with us. Okay, can I have uh, for that equals again? Specifically, as you get to the end of the second corridor, there is another shove and the angle changes ahead of you. There is another little chasm way to get back into the module. It's almost like the thing's snapping. Okay, so what difficulty? Same difficulty and advantage as last time. Yeah. I'm a complete wash. Three success. One success, three advantage. Two success and one advantage. Right, so key, you um you start to slide down. Oh um, here we go. And start to slide down and you're pulling like the sled's not helping, it's almost pulling you down with it, as it were. Uh, how would the rest of you like to spend your advantage? Can I use my advantages so I've got two arms anchoring myself in, and my other two arms, one grabs K, the other grabs the sled yeah. to halt that momentum. I can spend my advantage to come up behind and stabilise them a bit more. Possibly try and switch my pack on to K if he's the first one to be struggling, whether he likes it or not. Uh, okay, uh, I'm happy with that. I'm used to dealing with, you know, fussy adolescent 
creatures in car seats and spaceship seats <laughs> and things. So. Sorry, I didn't react to the whether he likes it or not, so you, you're pushing it further. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, I am. Just in case you're thinking of reacting, I'm ready for you. To defer the fact that he does have some respect for you, although he is possibly a little unnerved by you as well. Roy, will we just casually say, you might not want it, but you could need it. As you all scramble into the final corridor area, you realise it's not a corridor. And you look down and you see a hangar bay. You're at the top bit of a hangar bay. Below you is a spaceship garage. There are two ships. One is kind of like, looks like some sort of sleek kind of luxury yacht type thing. Mm-hmm. And the other one is a variant on the YT. It's longer, thinner YT cruiser. On the YT cruiser, there are a bunch of boffins hauling large cargoes into it. Okay. Boffins, uh, do we recognise them at all? You recognise at least one of them. It's the one that you rescued. And what, the what? other ship, there's nothing that will be there. There's no one on there. Right. Does it look obviously like it was still hit, like it started off in this ship, as opposed to just arrived? Or are they both in stealing one that's always already here? There's no real way to tell, but given your physical location, it would be unlikely that someone landed it into Especially as you know how the Wolfens got here. We're going for the sleek ship there. Okay. Do we need to climb down? To you me? will need, uh, again, athletic swords. Same again? Yeah. I've now got a rocket pack. Can I hit which will help my descent? That's a blue die. I am losing my blue die because that feels fair. Okay, so I got two advantage, one failure, but two light side dice, which I am using. So I'm, that changes that to be one and uh, two advantage and one pass. Okay. I have two failure and one advantage. I have two success and one advantage. One success, one advantage. Will get sound fine? Take it's get sound fine. How are you spinning your advantages? To help the doctor get down fine if he's starting to visibly fall. And how are you spinning your advantage? Because he's on the other end of the repulsor, I'll I'll take up the slack. Okay. Um, so what essentially happens is the doctor almost falls out. You grab him in his arm. You're able to climb down. Uh, you're able to climb down as well. He almost like as the doctor falls yeah. off, the whole thing almost tips the wrong way around, and then you just notice that there's a switch that says yeah. reverse. You press. And it bobs you down, and by toggling the switch quickly, yeah, you're able to fall we down, leaf our way down. Yes, well, that was not good. Let's get onto the ship, Tychus. Could you make sure the buffums are not going to mess with us? I, oi, secretary. Yes, we're having this one. Fine. This one's called the puzzle box. We're having it. This one's called the chopper. We're getting to it. We'll see you back at the bloody kiss. Right. Did you find what you were after? Aye, you! Well, we found the spice, and this has got the name of the thing that we want, but not the description. So, frankly, cliff them. Aye, close enough! Oh, I wish you'd have lied, because we're pulling a giant <laughs> statue <laughs> <laughs> behind us. No! <laughs> you haven't seen a strange gilded box, have you? No, but we have seen a couple of ISB scum. They try to bushwhack us. We saw something similar. We shot them. Aye, hey, we tried. It might have been they've nabbed it. There's a shuttle out there, but we can't get to it. Not yet, but when you fly out, you've got guns on that thing, aye? Hey? Frag it. <laughs> Not actually what I was thinking, but good point. Dart towards the luxury um, yacht thing. It's a yacht, basically. It's uh, silver and gold. It's got sails. Oh. It's got a very, very nice kind of smooth engine, and you, you see from the front that it's got sails that deploy when it's in, in when it gets into space. It's clearly smoother in space. Yeah, it has a bit of drag. Yeah. I see. You scramble aboard. Mm-hmm. Can Roy disappear briefly to try and find a bottle of drink? Is there any drink in this, and it's a, a yacht kind of thing? Oh, it's um, got to be. The, there's, spend a light side point. I mean, it, it might, it might <laughs> yeah, be. Yeah, we're spending yeah. a light side point. There's a mini bar. It's not a mini bar. It's a maxi bar. There's another light bar, um, and there's a creaking sound, and you can see daylight from the side. Can I have a slicing roll to get in? Because it's locked. Funnily enough. Oh, well, of course we haven't got into it. This sounds like a Tychus thing to me. Um, but computers, then, is it? Yeah. Yes, uh, please. I can computers. So I- I'll, I'll go. Give it a go. Well, you coming with me, weren't you? So you, can you, you open can, the door for us? You can either try computers or you can try skull, skullduggery to see if the key's knocking around. Shall we do both? Yeah. I'll be doing a skullduggery roll. Okay. No, that, that did not go so well. You I... know the reason why you didn't find the, the key? Because I found the key. Because those are all disadvantage. Yeah. You've got one success. One and success and three disadvantage. Right, so what you don't find the key. Do you find 
is a very large bottle of something that you think is probably fizzy and delicious. Basically, you, you rifle through a desk and you find a shattered box and it's full of broken bottles, but one of them is fine and it's very heavy. It's a magnum of champagne. It's, it's a bottle of bollage. I got three successes. Okay. You go straight to the door. It's above the... Yeah. yeah it's literally in a storage compartment uh, and there's a small hole-out blaster and some keys. Take off. It's like a little block paddy thing. Press the button. Yep. The door slides open. Go, 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 go! Going, 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 going. I move the statue in. And I catch up. You get in. It is lovely. It's well upholstered. Quite clearly it's been cleaned and also been cleaned out. So, you are in front of the ship. There is a slot for pilot. Turret slot. There's a navigation slot. I'm going to be the pilot. Okay. I'll take the Astrid nav because I'm not really a shooting person. I've actually got one ranking gunnery. That's probably the best one for me then. So I'll take the turret. And I'll take engineering. Okay. It takes about a minute to get it to start to warm up. And then there's another cracking sound. There's still no clear point of egress. This is going to be close. We might not have a way out. How are those guns? Uh, uh, checking on guns. Can we get the guns activated before the rest of the ship's warmed up? Or? Yeah, you can turn them on. Yeah, I, I flick a few switches and get the guns set up before everything else goes through. I'm going to put all shield power to the front and ideally try and get like a... Almost so it works like a battering ram so that if Mim weakens the wall, we can just punch through. Make your gun roll, please, Mim. I think you're using the biggest guns that the ship has, which is one twin light laser cannon. Yeah, if we're planning on trying to punch through, that makes the most sense. What difficulty? So it's close range. So that's one. So that's one. Fine. That's one, one success and two advantages. Okay, so you shoot through the wall. Would you like me to spend the advantage for you? Yes, because I suppose I, as, as long as we're out in the, the surface and so we don't just go, haha, we've broken through the wall straight into a cave. <laughs> straight into, <laughs> into the kitchens. <laughs> so you, you basically shoot a tunnel, which is too small for you. And there's a slight look of disappointment. And behind you, a missile fly, flies through from the, the front of the freighter and blows a massive one in the wall. Thank you. Um, can I have an engineering roll, please, from Tigers? Uh, what difficulty? Uh, two. Two success, one advantage. You don't take any damage from the, the bits of falling spaceship. And just as you start the engines, mm-hmm. you um, note that the, there's a Rodian running towards you. The same Rodian as before, a different person. What's waving. he look like? Is he waving anything? He's he... waving his arms. Uh, he's he's in standard uh, desert gear. Uh, you can't tell where he, which faction he's from at this range. Make sure you strap him in when he gets on board and clip down the gangplank to room to run on. Okay. Um, he, he, he jumps on board. And up goes the gangplank. Up goes the gangplank. Who is dealing with him? I'm going to go deal with him. Okay. How are you dealing with him? Basically, at the midst point, I'm going to tell him to stop right where he is and buckle up. <laughs> sit, down, sit down and buckle up and put anything he's carrying down. Are you pointing a weapon at him? I'll put a pistol at him, but I'm going to use force influence on him. Okay, make your will. Right, okay. I have three advantage and a dark side point, so it's not actually a succeed on the check. Can't make him do the thing, can I? That's right. Okay, so I'm clearly new to my power. Okay, you punch his gun at him, you're yeah. vaguely threatening. He straps in anyway, yeah. doesn't want to die. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and at this point, I'm not strapped in, and he is. <laughs> this uh, went great. <laughs> you strap yourself in opposite, waving your gun at him. He is hugging a sack of something. At this point, I'm just going to use the advance to make sure I'm strapped in. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll worry about what's in the sack in a minute. Here I'm we assuming. go. Pilot roll, please. The um, wall falls over, essentially, at this point, mm-hmm. uh, and there is a just about enough boom. For the pair of you, if you go one by one. Yeah, I'm going first. <laughs> yeah, while well, you're fasting. The um, difficulty on this one is free. Okie dokie. Spend a light side point. Yeah, on. can you move me a light side point over, please? Okay, so that is three successes, including the two light side points I'm just using, and three advantages. The uh, successes, obviously, to make it that we can get through here. Uh, we'll be using the advantages um, to. Um, Oh, what can we use them for? We're making our way through... It's a clear straight path up for us and for the... I imagine we are slightly smaller than the freighter, because yeah. we're sleeker. If there's any point where we can't, we can get through and they can't, I'm going to make sure that we, while we weave, 
it gives Roy the advantage to make extra holes. Uh, okay. Roy, cut us away through. I can do that. So I'm going to give him advantages to expand the area open. You shoot your way out and through, and as you get up, you're able to whip the ship. It's it's manoeuvrable enough so you can whip it so its back is pointing downwards yes. and you can go straight up like a rocket. As you get out, Mm -hmm. in front of you, you can see two Lambda shuttles that are firing on the freighter. Not yourselves, not the freighter behind you, but the actual razor's heel heel is being shot at. Are you doing anything about that? I'm not, unless I'm being told to do so, because where I'm going is back to where our ugly was. Leave that for the thermal wolves. Yeah. to take out if they want to. Yeah. But them blowing up the freighter is doing our job. Yes, exactly. The crate where our ugly was, is it anywhere near those shuttles or do we? Uh, can we get away from them? to? Because we were quite a way away, but not... You would have to make another pilot check to land uh, and whip round. But it's going to be like, essentially, you're going to have to go far away, then back round and down. So you're returning back to the scene of the crate. That's fine. All right, we don't want to leave the other droid. Nope. Can I have a pilot roll, please? Uh, what difficulty? Three... It's more landing without getting shot. I got a dark side on there, but I'm not focusing on the dark side, so I'm not going to use that. Two successes, but two threat. So I imagine I'm pushing this... I mean, you you, you do do what the threat is, but I imagine I'm pushing the ship to places it shouldn't really be going and possibly damaging it somewhat by doing the manoeuvres. What you do is you land, uh, but you don't deploy the landing mechanism fully Mm -hmm. because it's supposed to land gracefully and you land it like a brick. Pops down, and I will make a slight note that your landing gear is not entirely deployed properly. Need right. to need someone to give it some love. Okay. Now we're quite a sleek thing. I don't think. I imagine we won't be able to fit the ugly in our ship. Well, the ugly's not massive, is it? So yeah. if, if there's any cargo space on this thing at all, we might be able to get it in because it's about the size of a transit van, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So the short version is: yes, you can, mm-hmm. but you're going to have to spend. It's going to take you at least five minutes to shove it in properly because you kind of have to reverse it and get it right. And... Well, I lower the cargo doors and just just over the intercom go, get the droid and the ugly as quick as you can. Okay. I'm going to continue to accompany our passenger for the moment to make sure he doesn't do anything oh, awkward. Oh, yeah. Hi. Who the hell are you? You know what, Doc? You got this. Come on, Roy. Let's get on it. Hang on. <laughs> Why have we stopped? Because we save people when they need it. Do you think that's a bad idea? Can I have a lift to Red Yes? That's our next stop, probably. Oh, right, great. Stay in your seat. Okay. <laughs> Me and Roy go and start manoeuvring the ugly in K2 into um, the ship. Vigilance checks. Difficulty? Two. That's one threat from Roy. He's not paying much attention. Okay. Three success. Failure, but two advantage. Failure, but two advantage. Doctor, mm. you hear it first, and then you notice it. The two shuttles have left. Right. And in the distance, you can hear the screaming sound of Thai bombers. Right. Coming down at some speed. I know I think... what I'd like to spend my advantage on. Okay. <laughs> Considering the general barrage, barrage of things and everything like that, both the speeder bikes from the Ugly have fallen off where we strap them on which makes it incredibly easy, much easier, sorry, to to get into the ship and cut the time. By those falling off, you're able to almost park it straight in. I would like to spend my advantages that we then kind of pile the speeder bikes in behind the ugly since they've fallen off. Nice and easy, plenty of space. I mean, the road you're fitting inside the ugly, inside the... No, where no. you're to this point. No, you're just in the, the cargo hold, I presume. We're not putting you in the ugly unless we absolutely have to. Could we put one of the speeder bikes in the ugly? You can put one of the speeder bikes in the ugly. I'll, I'll let you have that. Then we'll do that and leave the other speeder bike out here. I don't really care that much. I'll let you spend the other advantage on remembering to turn the shields on as soon as you get in. Yep. You cram in. Can I have another pilot roll from our ace fi- starfighter pilot? Difficulty? Two. Oh, and a black die as well. Uh, ignore that black die. Okay. Okay, so that's one success and uh, two advantages with a dark side point, which I'm ignoring. Okay, so just as the, the droid gets in... Mm-hmm. And slams the door, going, go, go, go! And there is a rush of engines, and there is an almighty explosion as the TIE bombers hit. And just as you leave, that would have been a direct hit. You would have all been dead. And they are bombing the entire area 
as you fly across, you see the ancient tower burst into flame as they hit that as well and start to just break apart the entire area. Are they paying any attention to vehicles leaving the area or are they just focusing on destroying this vicinity? Right now, they seem to be just focusing on destroying that vicinity. I'll give this a key for free. Those are short range vehicles. Yeah, we need to get out of here. Aye, let's go. Go, go, go. Those bombers did not fly here from anywhere else other than a Star Destroyer. Punch it. Do you punch it? Yeah. We're not going back to Red Yes, though. We're going back to Brack of the Hut's palace because I put a heavy bet on us getting there first. Okay. <laughs> Roy's going to go straight into the, the turrets again. I'm going to go and fix the landing gear now it's been retracted. Yeah, I make a world difficulty too. Five success, two threat. Okay. So- the, the threat mm-hmm. is I get stuck... <laughs> in the uh, I, I fix it but but I've kind of had to lift a maintenance panel and I've gone in head first and I fixed it but I'm stuck in there which of course now pushes Mim's bar getting stuck in are you protocol. serious <laughs> Roy's Roy's, <laughs> Mims, Sorry, Rim. uh, Roy's um, getting stuck protocols into overdrive what makes that worse is the fact that the pit droid as well is stuck behind him and is too dumb to move sideways so it keeps bombing into his bottom like repeatedly making that nervous laughter that those droids make. Yeah. <laughs> Just bumps into him, giggles, bumps into him, giggles. Exactly how completely nuts has Roy gone at this point? As soon as he's realised that nope, this is a grade A scenario, it's happened. Oddly enough, he's become very robotic. There's some soothing music, which is now playing out of his ears and shoulders, which is quite nice. It's meant to sort of calm him down, to stop him struggling. I'm going to say there is a slight beeping going off because he's sending a message to the most important people, which is (laughs) Mum. We're telling Mum that that, 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 this this is a headcase scenario. This is a headcase scenario. There's also a little bit of lubricant now coming out of Roy's hands as he goes in to try and start massaging... <laughs> what are you... <laughs> massaging Bar to try and, and, and ease him out gently. He's making a lot of nonsense sounds. These are these things that would, were designed... The medical droids use similar things like... <laughs> just calming sounds. As he, and we're just going to pull your left up. We're just going to move your back into the room. Take your hip. There, there, here we go. Oh, Get fight. you out on ice and Get slow. Off me. Pull the <laughs> left. Pull fight. the left. Bang at me. Not in front of the holocron. I'm... You better not have told mum. By the time you get to Bracker's Palace... Hang on. I would like to be persuading the Rodian at this point that, one, it's a good idea if he gets medically checked out so that I can keep, keep him distracted from doing anything else that will interfere with what's going on. I'm trying to reassure him that whatever's going on with Bar and Roy at this moment is entirely normal for them based on my last 48 hours experience with them, but also I'm trying to get a good idea of how threatening this guy is, because if I'm looking through, you know, looking generally medical scanning, I'm also trying to work out whether he's carrying a lot of weapons under his coat or anything like that. He's carrying a uh, viral sword and a blaster. Okay. Uh, he is lightly armoured. Mm-hmm. He is heavily tattooed. Okay. He is not terribly muscular, uh, and he is nervous as all heck. Almost like he's seen lots of his friends die today. Okay. I'm trying to reassure him on the mental level, uh, on the level of his mental health, but also, am I treating any injuries that he's got? Uh, just he's generally, not, general... You, you, you treat him. Yeah. He, he, you calm him down. Meanwhile, just as you get to the palace... There is an inevitable popping sound and a really angry tigers. Oh, I'm all, <laughs> all gooey! All oiled and greasy. Over the intercom comes, okay, I'm going to turn the seatbelt sign off now so uh, you can roam around the... You There's young a... man are in a ten minute timeout. The pit droid has gone into dormant stage and is skittering around the area, mostly bumping into your ugly because there's not much space. My mum would really laugh if she heard it, but I'm just going to quickly call mum and tell her everything's okay. Yeah, yeah, mom, 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 mom. You can ignore that last message. It was fine. He's out. He's really doing fine. I just need to go sort out things. Love you, pal. You have resolved your obligation. Not very well. <laughs> <laughs> you have resolved your obligation. We're really glad that that stranger that we let on board the ship didn't try anything while that was happening. I'm keeping him calm. It's fine. I'm sure that the calming sound of really helped as well. 
You land. Yes. Oh. Oh, that seems to have fixed itself. <laughs> <laughs> Can we spend a light side point for the first one's back? <laughs> I'm spending a dark side point, I'll tell you. <laughs> that bounces up. You don't need to move um, the thing on the chart. Def- so, the door's open. Yes. The Vodian Scarvers. Like, yeah, but he's going to get there second, though, right? As soon as the door opens, he burns out. What the rest are you doing? Oh, I don't think we should let him go. Is, is, can... He'll be the first one back if we let him go. Stop him. I was already kind of wanting to instinctively gather small furry creatures onto me because I have to look after them at the moment. So, uh, can I, I don't know, try and reach out a hand to grab him before he... Do you still have one of those mines, the one that was capturing, the capturing type of mines, to throw at him? Or possibly to put into a grenade launcher and fire at him? So, you're just landing... <laughs> You're They're about, not getting into this, sorry. You're, you're about to drop the gantry plane. Yeah. The Rudian has already unbuckled himself. He's like, thank you, thank you, thank you. What are you doing, party? Well, I'm in the pilot seat. You guys have to decide what you're doing. I'm assuming we're being very vigilant to, well, I'm watching this guy, particularly as the intercom has told us we need to be there first. I want to put a very friendly, reassuring, heavy, unmoving arm on this guy's shoulder uh, and just get him to sit down until I'm satisfied the bar and everybody is safe. No one's leaving this small area until I'm happy. So that's going to be a, oh, you should hold your swoop bike there. We want to find out who you are. Okay, my name is Dreadal. Okay, now we know who he is. Thank you. Are we parked yet? Can I get out of the... Yeah, Yeah. why so eager? To get out of here, to claim my bounty. Yeah, we're going first, mate. Consider it repayment for saving your life. That's fine. Right, I stand up and brush some of the oil off me. It's nice to meet ya. Nice to meet you too. Right, let's go. Let's get this done. Yeah. Step up, step out of the back. I reverse <clears> the <throat> ugly out so that we can then get out the statue without having to bend it round the ugly. Yeah. Okay. You start dealing with your cargo. Mm-hmm. Can There's I There's a pre- freighter in the distance. <clears throat> it's a YT model. I head off straight to the palace. Bring it as soon as you can. I, as I'm kind of backing the, the ugly out. Uh, Roy, Doc, get that um, hut statue on the move. I'll catch you up. So hang on, I'm confused now. Where are you, are you all? Are you all heading to the palace? The I, as soon as they started pulling the ugly out, we saw the YT. I started going straight into the palace to uh, to announce our arrival. Okay. Are you you get into the palace, you're immediately stopped by a weekway. Hello. Hello, we're back. Oh, well done. Are we the first to, uh, to return? Let me check. Yes. Excellent. We'll get the statue for you. Oh, you were on statue duty? Yes, oh, indeed. Well done, you. Excuse me while I go talk to some other people. And he snaps his fingers, yes. and various people who are hanging around the palace leave, and you're left in the foyer. Yep. Yeah. I want to be very clear that I am first in the foyer. I am standing right in the centre of it, in, I believe you call it a death zone or something like yeah. that. Yeah, kill zone. Saying, kill zone, that's the one. So I'm right in the centre of the kill zone, waiting for what I deserve. Mim and Ross join you with the statue. Yeah. Then there's Tychus. Then there's Dada. So you're all together. Yeah. In the kill zone. Yeah. Then there's Daedal. He's looking very nervous. And then the thermal balls arrive. They are carrying substantially more than you are. Roy waves at them enthusiastically. Hi. Hello. Glad you escaped. All right, lads. What are we third? Yeah, sorry about that. We got more stuff then. Not more stuff. Yeah, we got more money. It's fine. It's not like we've gambled too heavily. I got a side bet about getting here first. That's why I need to be here first. Oh, is it your idea? No, not my idea, but I like a good bet. You know, I think maybe that part of the the reason this was done the way it was. Anyway. I'm not sure. I think you guys left before we even got on this job. Yeah, we had more to carry those. Um, Yeah, true. I don't believe we're going to lose to the shattered off, though. He stares at the Rodian. The Rodian stands there nervously. Yeah, well... Well, it's up to him to decide whether he wants to step behind all of your men with their weapons. No, nope. well, yeah, I there to... are rather a lot of them in comparison to him, aren't there? <laughs> yeah, I understood that there weren't any shattered earth left whatsoever. What he is, understandably, is an independent contractor in that white wee man. That's completely right. I'm neither shattered nor orphish. Maybe, and you know, I don't know if that's a good idea for him, but maybe he should consider joining a different gang. He gives you a really dirty look. It's like a really dirty look. I've got a contract negotiation to do. Of course. Hey, are there, are there, are there, are there Legomorphs in that bag? Because I had a bag of Legomorphs and I dropped them. Can, is, is that my bag? No. Are you sure? Yes. No Legomorphs? 
No. Get luck? No. Okay. You get to the palace. Yeah. You are escorted. There is a chiss, finely yes. dressed in white, mm-hmm. who um, beckons you over before your um, audience. Can I please examine the goods? There he you go- go. He goes over. He looks at it. He looks at it on all sides. He leans over. He puts his hand on it. He presses a button. A drawer opens. He looks at it. Disappointed. Closes it. Goes to the other side. Clicks another button. Another drawer comes out. Takes out two bags or something. Those disappear into his clothing. There's a smile on his face. He closes that. Thank you. I will get the statue and the um, supplies to back him as quickly as I can. How would you like pain? Well, we had our side bet initially. Yes, this is what I'm referring to. I would like to be paid in opals. They will be with you before you leave. Thank you. Credits for me, please. At this point, a donation to the woods of the nearby hospital will be he, great. He, in fact, looks at you in... and says, oh, Would a substantial donation without any strings attached be of any use? That sounds great. We will also give you a welcome package. The usual. Nothing special. That I'm concerned about. But... Oh, Doc, you just joined the gang. Great. <laughs> we are cut into the montage scene. Mm-hmm. Um, you are given a reward of cash. Bracker seems most amused, but demands you tell the story. He then demands you tell the story again and again. Each one of you is is asked to tell the tale. As people join and are brought in, they also tell their own stories. Some of these sound completely unlikely. The, the Thermal Wolves make everything up. Apparently yeah. there were vicious wolf-like creatures released into, into the ship that had gotten loose. Were they blue? Yes. Oh, blue no. No, blue we, wolf-like we, we, monsters. We saw those. We saw yeah. those. Uh, and, and the tentacled beasts that, that ate through walls. Uh, and many, many stormtroopers who were all killed um, due to the cunning and cleverness and so on. And as other people arrive, the story gets more and more ridiculous in the telling and the retelling. Who is partaking? Who is, who is joining in and drinking with this dangerous egomaniac gangster uh, no um, <laughs> as soon as it's polite to go I'm getting the hell out of here okay um, I'm partaking because I'm a drunk but I will if you're going go with you because I don't want to stick around but I am having free drink I'm not drinking but I'm sticking around until these guys go and then I'm going with them Far, far can, can we take them home I'm not so sure that the folks I don't, you know what I Let's let's go back to somewhere definitely safe. I'll put the kettle on. I think I did manage to find this bottle of brown and bubbly. Well, let's go somewhere where we can have a proper drink. Right. If we're going back to the shop, okay, mm-hmm. going back to the shop, there is something that, K Doc, you need to be absolutely aware of. Okay? Okay. Right. We went for a walk. Nothing of concern happened. I have not been shot. I, I say, kind of tugging my, my tattered overalls over the still fresh wound in my side. Nothing bad happened. Roy had a very minor malfunction, which caused her panic circuits to tweak and to cover me in oil, but that was fine. And that's we, when we met you in our ship. I picked you that's up exactly and brought you home. We, and there's nothing suspicious been going on at all. We've just been having a, a nice uh, business venture. You're an off-world trader, and you've heard about our weapons, and it was a corporate, a corporate lunch. We've been for a corporate lunch. Which lasted two days. Uh, it was a big... I don't eat. Aye, so you had to eat for him. Um, it was... You can't rush these kind of negotiations. It was a corporate lunch on a, um, on a company credit chip, and you can't not indulge yourself on a company credit chip so we're cool nothing nothing bad has happened at all um we're all fine and we're definitely not telling mum that we found a laser sword a big shiny glowing crystal and some kind of a spooky box right how could we possibly have found all those things on a corporate lunch i i don't know but you've got a you've got a laser sword no i haven't no that what that is that is 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 a prototype welding tool that's a little bit strong. It's my own design. I made it. I like that. I like that. You all end up at the bar household. Mm-hmm. They're lovely. 
They're completely lovely. They feed you meatballs. It's very nice. They wait. They listen to Tychus. And then Mr. Barr, Barr Senior, very quietly says, So where did all the Lagomorphs come from then? Oh, that's the doctor. And as <laughs> as, as the look on everyone's face, as they realise, as Tychus' mum leans to Roy and goes, He's in so much trouble. Yeah. <laughs> we end it there. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Thank you very much. And here ends Shadows of the Jedi Part 1 and the end of our second season. Stay tuned. Next episode is going to be another table chat with the cast and crew as we talk out what's gone on in the season just past, drop some hints and tips about what's upcoming, answer some of your questions, and generally talk a little bit of nonsense. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Force Majeure is played using the Star Wars Force and Destiny game system by Fantasy Flight Games and Lucas Books. Our intro music for the rest of this season is Superpower Cool Dude by Kevin MacLeod, and our outro music remains Suburban Outlaw by Forget the Whale, both used with gratitude under the Creative Commons license. A number of our ambient sounds and sound effects are provided by Sirenscape, because epic games deserve epic sounds. For episode-specific credits for music, please see the show notes and also the credits page of our website at forcemajeurepod.com. If you like the show and want to support us, there's a few ways you could do that. The first is by rating and reviewing wherever you find us, be it iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Podbean, wherever. That helps other people find us and lets us know that we're telling the sort of stories that you enjoy hearing. We do have a Patreon page at patreon.com slash forcemajeurepod and also a coffee account at ko fi i.com slash force majeure pod if you've got some change burning a hole in your pocket i want to throw it our way we appreciate all the support we do have social media presences the easiest way to find us is on twitter at force majeure pod we do also have a facebook page and an instagram page and a discord server links to all of these are contained in the show notes come along and talk nonsense with us we always like to hear from fans of the show and until next time may the force be with you